So now is the time for a uh, lot of presentations where all our teachers have really worked hard to come up with uh, developments which, which they have done over the CS Pachala curriculum. And I think it's going to be a good time and you'll have a good time seeing all these innovations. So I have a few uh, announcements. You'll get six minutes, as you know, to present your uh, presentation. And uh, you should be able to tell uh, ma'am here that, you know, move on to the next slide when you want to. And uh, like we are teachers, uh, we have cards where uh, at the fourth minute, you will see a green sign. Then let's call this a pre-warning. Then uh, this will be a warning at the fifth minute. And this will be the final bell. OK? So uh, please respect the final bell. Otherwise, uh, it becomes very uh, it, it becomes very hard for us to, we'll have to turn off the mic. So <laughs> anyway, kidding. So, but please respect this. And uh, we should probably start off now. Kritika ma'am will uh, announce the names. So please request you to come up on stage one by one. Thank you. Would like to call upon Kavita Shinde from Walnut School. Okay. Bhakti V. Mohola, City Pride School. Yeah. Requesting all the presenters to sit in the first row. P. Jayapalapa Jaya Foundation for Education. Sneha Umbarkar from Dr. Kalmadi Shamarao High School. Amrita Daik, DK, Mrs. Afrin Usmani, Mr. Mihir Sawai, City Pride School. Mrs. Manisha Shinde, Mrs. Poonam Kandekar, Mrs. Poonam More, City Pride School. Viral Ben from Sh is online. OK. Yeah. May I request Kavita to start the session? Hello. Uh, good afternoon, all. I think post lunch, uh, everyone is feeling sleepy. Good afternoon, all. <laughs> My name is Kavita Shinde. I'm from Walnut School, uh, Fursungi, Pune. Today, I'm going to uh, present an abstract on the city-based uh, unplugged activities in classroom, that is board games. Ma'am, next. Uh, significance of uh, computational thinking and its implementation in the school is uh, increasing worldwide. Our director, uh, Mrs. Arpita Karkare, ma'am, and uh, Mr. Nikhil Karkare, sir, also one of the core members of CS Patshala believe that computational thinking is one of the essential subjects to be taught in the school uh, during school years. Thus, to develop uh, children's computational thinking skills, we at Walnut School conduct various activities based on computational thinking skills. We have integrated city in our uh, curriculum from 2017. So this paper describes two board game activities where the students are uh, using different city skills to reach to the solution. Ma'am, next. So we have the first board game that is table cover up 11 to 20. So in this activity, you can see the uh, board game picture uh, on the screen. In this activity, students need two coins and 10 counters for each player. So the first player has to keep one coin on 11, you can see the blue uh, upper uh, right corner, the grids are there, the numbers are displayed. So in blue uh, grids, 11 to 20 numbers are displayed. And in the pink uh, squares, the 1 to 10 numbers are displayed. So the player has to keep first coin on 11 and the second coin on uh, 1. So they have to multiply the coin uh, numbers under the coins. So the, uh, now 
under uh, the coins 11 and 1 number is there. So they will multiply 11 into 1 and the answer will be 11. So they will key, uh, place their counter on in the large grid where the 11 number is there. So in subsequent place they have to do. So the first uh, coin is on 11. So they, the second coin they will move from 1 to 20 to form a table of 11. Then uh, again, to, uh, like this, uh, the same way the table of 11 is made, they will make the table from 12 to 20 as well. In the game, sometimes what happens, the multiplication of two different numbers is same. Uh, we can see the example 12 into 7 is 84 and 14 into 6 is also 84. So uh, if already the counter is there on 84, so it will be considered as taken and the, pa the other player cannot keep his counter on that number and the move will be passed to the next player. Ma'am, next. So in the table of 11, they observe the pattern as 11, 22, 33, 44. The, uh, there was a repetition of number. Also, they observe the pattern that multiples of even numbers are even numbers. And the multiples of odd numbers are both even and odd as well. So here, they had an opportunity to, uh, opportunity to uh, recognize the patterns. So we ask the questions like uh, which multiples of odd numbers give odd answers and which multiples of uh, odd numbers gives even answers. So here uh, the players are computing the answers of the multiplication and they form the tables from 11 to 20. They look for an answer in rows and columns. They list down the answers to form a full table of a particular number. Also, they are combining one number. For example, 11 is uh, combined with 1 to 10 numbers. So here they learn to make the combinations. Next, ma'am. Now we have the first variation in this game. Getting four counters in, uh, counters in a line, horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. So here, player 1 can choose which two coins to place his coins. Uh, sorry. OK. <laughs> can choose uh, which two numbers to place his coins on. In subsequent plays, one of these coins can be moved. So player one uh, selects 16 and 2. He places the first counter on 16 and second on 2. So the multiplication is 32, you can see in the first image. Uh, then the player two moves the second coin from 2 to 6. And the multiplication is 16 into 6. The multiplication is 96. So he places uh, his counter on nine, uh, 96. So here. Uh, they have to uh, see the multiples of first number, that is 16, uh, consider 16 is the first number. So you can see in the second image, they have to see the multiples of uh, 16 and the sixth number in every table to get four counters in a row. So uh, uh, here uh, uh, we, have the, uh, we are running out of the time, so I'm not explaining all the moves. So here they are moving one coin at a time. So uh, they are getting the answers like 90, 45, 51, 85, and 119. So you can see that the player one is uh, very close to the winning position. So here they are developing computational thinking skills like decomposition, pattern recognition, by examining the moves and moving through the grid. We had the save, uh, second variation here. The uh, Sometimes uh, children know that uh, the whole table, they are thorough with the whole table, but they are often con confused with the random multiplication. So here they can choose any two no random numbers to keep their uh, place their counters, and they can just cover up the table. So in previous variation, they were uh, playing against each other, and here they are working together. So it increases their uh, individual and team strengths. So uh, the biggest challenge uh, was while uh, taking this uh, activity, uh, students were not thorough with the tables. So should I? Then. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. नमस्कार येथे उपस्थित सर्व उपक्रमशील सजग तार्किक विचारांच्या सगळ्या मान्यवरांना नमो नमः मी भक्ती मोहळे सिटी प्राइड स्कूल निगडी पुणे येथे संस्कृत विषयाचे अध्यापन करते 
चला शिकूया खेळातून संस्कृत भाषेतील वाक्यरचना लर्न संस्कृत सेंटेन्सेस कन्स्ट्रक्शन थ्रू प्ले वे मेथड याविषयी माहिती द्यायला आपल्यासमोर उपस्थित आहे असं म्हटलं जातं की ज्ञान आणि ज्ञानार्थी यांना जोडणारा विद्यार्थी जशेतला सगळ्यात महत्वाचा घटक म्हणजे शालेय अभ्यासक्रम मग या अभ्यासक्रमामध्ये पाठ्यपुस्तक अध्यापक अध्यापन पद्धती आणि वेळेची मर्यादा या सगळ्याचा समन्वय साधणं जर अवघड जातं म्हणूनच वाक्यरचना शिकवताना पारंपरिक पद्धती बाजूला ठेवून थोडस एक खेळाच्या स्वरूपामध्ये यावेळेस प्रयत्न केला यासाठी दोन खेळ मी तयार केले यातला पहिला खेळ आहे करता आणि क्रियापदाचे चक्र यामध्ये सगळ्यात सुरुवातीला विद्यार्थ्यांना वाक्याचे जर दोन भाग सांगितले तर पहिला आहे करता आणि दुसरं क्रियापद तर या पहिल्या गोलामध्ये करता दिलेला आहे आणि दुसऱ्या खालच्या गोलामध्ये खालच्या चक्रामध्ये क्रियापद दिलेलं आहे जे संस्कृतमध्ये त्या करत्याला खास प्रकारचे सफिक्स लावलेलं क्रियापद असतं तर ते इथे बनवून दिलेलं आहे तर विद्यार्थ्याला त्या करत्यासाठी लागणारं क्रियापद कोणतं आहे हे फिरवून ओळखता आलं पाहिजे आणि त्यानंतर ते वाक्य व्यवस्थित वहीमध्ये लिहिता आलं पाहिजे मग यातून अल्गोरिदम म्हणजे तार्किक विचारक्षमता पॅटर्न रिकग्नायझेशन या पद्धतीचा विकास त्यांचा होतो दुसरा प्रकार आहे चला बनवूया वाक्य यामध्ये तीन चक्र तुमच्यासमोर म्हणजे विद्यार्थ्यांसमोर दिले जातात काही गट केले जातात यामध्ये तीन चक्रापैकी पहिल्या चक्रामध्ये त्यांना करता दिला जातो सब्जेक्ट दुसरा करता दुसऱ्यामध्ये व्हर्बचं म्हणजे कर क्रियापदाचं मूळ रूप आणि तिसरं आहे ते म्हणजे सेंटेन्स टाईप्स ऑफ सेंटेन्स मग विद्यार्थ्यांनी यावरील बाण फिरवायचं आहे जो करता येईल जो क्रियापदाचे मूळ रूप येईल आणि जो टाईप ऑफ सेंटेन्स येईल या सगळ्याचा समन्वय साधत विद्यार्थ्याने ते वाक्य बनवायचं आहे मग यामध्ये क्रियापदाचे रूप बनवून दिलेले नाही मग ते बनवताना इथे जो लकार दिलेला आहे म्हणजे जो टाईप ऑफ सेंटेन्स दिलेला आहे तो विद्यार्थ्याने तयार करायचा आहे आणि मग त्या करत्याला त्या टाईप ऑफ सेंटेन्सचं व्यवस्थित क्रियापदाचं रूप लावून मग वाक्य बनवून दाखवायचं आहे मग यामुळे विद्यार्थ्याला फक्त पाठांतर न करता तो प्रत्यय ते क्रियापदाचं रूप कुठल्या टाईप ऑफ सेंटेन्समध्ये कसं वापरायचं हे आपोआप लक्षात राहतं आणि मग एकच करत्यासाठी या सहा प्रकारच्या क्रियापदांचे रूप बनवता बनवता त्वमसाठी जर सी हा प्रत्यय लागतो आहे तर खादसी वदसी पठसी नमसी हे करता करता त्वमसाठी सी हा प्रत्यय लागतो हे त्याच्या आपोआप लक्षात राहतं असं या खेळाद्वारे हे वाक्यरचनेचं रूप तयार केलं तिसरा प्रकार केला होता शिकवताना म्हणजे अध्यापन करताना लिटरेचरमध्ये संस्कृतमध्ये प्रहेलिका म्हणजे क्विज हा प्रकार एक आहे मग ही प्रहेलिका शिकवताना किंवा शिकताना मात्र तुम्हाला या प्रत्येक ठिकाणी तार्किक विचार करावा लागतो त्याचं पॅटर्न ठरवावं लागतो की या वाक्यामध्ये तुम्हाला त्याचं दिलेलं उत्तर हे त्या प्रहेलिकेमध्येच आहे पण हे शोधायचं कसं मग आता उदाहरणार्थ यामध्ये जर पहिले तीन वाक्य दिले आणि चौथी ओळ हे त्या प्रश्नाचं उत्तर आहे परंतु ती ओळ जर तशीच्या तशी अर्थाने घेतली तर त्याचा अर्थ वेगळाच लागतो पण हे तीनही शब्द जर क्रमाने तीनही ओळींच्या समोर लावले तर मात्र या कोड्याचं उत्तर आपल्यासमोर जरूर येतं तर अशा प्रकारे ही प्रहेलिकासुद्धा विद्यार्थ्यांसमोर या खेळाच्या रूपाने सादर केली तर या सगळ्या भाषेत खेळातून अल्गोरिदम लॉजिकल थिंकिंग योग्य उत्तर मिळवण्यासाठी प्रयत्न करायला विद्यार्थी प्रवृत्त झाले असं दिसून आलं शब्दरूप हे फक्त पाठांतर मनामध्ये लक्षात ठेवून गेस करून अशी उत्तरं देण्याऐवजी विद्यार्थ्यांमध्ये आनंददायी आणि परिणामकारक आम्हाला इव्हॅल्युएशन दिसून आलं हे इव्हॅल्युएशन करताना आम्ही क्लास टेस्ट म्हणजे या घटकांवर वर्गपरीक्षा घेतल्या मग त्या त्या घटकांच्या असतील आणि मग वाक्यरचना त्यांना जमते आहे की नाही यासाठी रायटिंग स्किल म्हणजे चित्रवर्णन चित्र दिले आणि त्यानुसार त्यांना ती वाक्यरचना करायची आहे याद्वारे त्यांचं इव्हॅल्युएशन केलं मग यामध्ये जवळजवळ पंच्याहत्तर टक्क्याने बदल दिसून आला मग या सगळ्यांमधून मुलांना वाक्यरचना करण्याची भीती कमी झालेली दिसून आली लॉजिकल थिंकिंग स्मरण वाचन लेखन या सगळ्याच कौशल्यांचा विकास झालेला दिसून आला आणि ज्याप्रमाणे मी तुम्हाला प्रहेलिका दाखवली ती प्रहेलिका शिकवून झाल्यानंतर विद्यार्थ्यांनी स्वतःहून अशा अनेक प्रकारच्या प्रहेलिका समोर आणल्या ज्या मी बाहेर डिस्प्लेसाठी बऱ्याच जणांनी पाहिल्या असतील तर मला असं वाटतं की आनंददायी आणि स्मरण लेखन वाचन या सगळ्याच कौशल्यांच्या विकासासाठी पारंप पद्धत पारंपरिक पद्धतीचे अध्ययन आणि अध्यापन यामध्ये थोडासा बदल करून या कॉम्प्युटेशनल थिंकिंगचा जर आपल्या घटकानुसार वापर झाला तर नक्कीच अध्ययन अध्यापन आणि त्याचप्रमाणे मूल्यमापन पद्धतीसुद्धा दडपण न घेता आनंददायी होण्यास नक्कीच मदत होते धन्यवाद
machen. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jaipal. So I am from uh, Foundation for Education, Ecology and Livelihood, Krishnamurthy Foundation, India, Kaigal, Chittu District, Andhra Pradesh. Next slide, ma'am. Next. We work in three areas, conservation, education, and livelihood. In education, we are uh, running two primary schools in two tribal communities and three learning centers in nearby villages. In school, 40 children are studying, and learning center, 120 children are studying. The school curriculum is integrated within the local environment. Students undertake several projects within the local environment, with allow for learning in different subjects. Next. About presentation, in our school, children do many outdoor activities that are linked into the environment. I want to present here about one such project, land use map, mapping, and how such project as elements of city. Children doing one is a transact bird watching, and other image was uh, representing land use mapping. Next image, madam. Children's learning. When children doing project like this, they explore free freely. They learn how to approach a problem, how to study into orderly manner. Systematic study, how to classify, collect data. They were themselves making cl classification of data. For example, in bird study, how many birds of what kind, comparison, birds of comparison, uh, types of birds, parts of birds, colors. In land use mapping, seeing different landscape patterns, they were communicating with each other with adults. In this process, lots of mathematics are learning, sorting, counting, and adding, collecting data. When present, representing, they see what in include, what not, and make charts, maps. Exploring land use patterns, locally their own land, their own villages. Understanding local ecology directly first hand. Next image, ma'am. Elements of city in environment proje projects. How to plan such projects and element many aspects of computational thinking are involved. In addition to teaching local ecology, we are able to show them a systematic way of study. How children engage and participate in such projects. How integrated projects can be planned and done at primary school level. How we as teachers need prepare for such activities, our attitude and our interest, our knowledge, flexibility in the school planning. Learning to observe and uh, work with children in different ways. Next image, ma'am. How was the land use map done? Planning, field observation, data collection, representing the data and analysis. Data collection and represent was an important skill learning. We identify area to study, explain to children how to observe and how to collect data. Looking on either sides, guess, estimate, count, keep record on what we can see. So in this process, children explore freely. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sneha Umbarkar. I'm from Dr. Kalmadi Shamrao High School, Pune. And my topic is unplugged uh, activity, which is based on artificial intelligence and for face recognition. So these are the contents of my presentation. Ma'am, please give me the second slide. Next. We are in the fifth generation of computers that is artificial intelligence, 
वी अवेयर दैट इन द क्लासरूम्स ऑल्सो चैट जी पी टी इज बूमिंग एवरी डे सो माई एक्टिविटी इज बेस्ड ऑन दैट क्राइटेरिया ओनली आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इज अ सिम्युलेशन ऑफ अ ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस विच इज प्रोसेस बाय द मशीन दिस प्रोसेस इंक्लूड्स लर्निंग रीजनिंग सेल्फ करेक्शन इंट्रोड्यूसिंग ए आई टू द यंग लर्नर ऑफ ग्रेड सिक्स वॉज अ चैलेंजिंग टास्क इन दिस फेशियल रिकग्निशन स्टूडेंट्स अवेयर अबाउट इट दे यूज इट फॉर दे आर दे वेर यूजिंग इन द स्मार्टफोन्स हाउ टू लॉक अनलॉक द फीचर्स यूजिंग फेस सो इट वॉज नॉट डिफिकल्ट टू रिलेट देम विथ एक्चुअल थिंग सो आई स्टार्टेड माई एक्टिविटी बाय आस्किंग देम फ्यू क्वेश्चन लाइक हाउ डू यू आइडेंटिफाई एन इमेजेस I showed them a uh, few images also, and I asked them like, uh, "Is there any rule to identify any picture? How do you differentiate between the two pictures?" So whatever the discussion was carried out was not enough to understand the logic behind face recognition. As they know, we uh, computer cannot understand or cannot uh, retain the information like how human being is doing. So I divided my activity in two parts with a fictional character and a non-fictional character. so fictional character for that i have used this disney princess to make it more interactive and engaging to them i have given this five princess uh, next slide five princess to five students from the class and i told them please uh, observe the image and write down the features and the attribute about that particular image so here you can see the dress color is yellow and all so one more city concept has been cleared over here that is variable and its value which is very difficult to uh, teach them using normal words next like that the five students come up with the different different analytical report here the very important concept has been cleared for city that is decomposition of the image and it's a important pillar for the image processing the second uh, i i told the same student now you have to make a questionnaire to identify that particular image so they made this questionnaire in this way the five questionnaire is made by the five different students those who have observed the image and returned the attributes next now the second step has been started that is database search they need to read the question the other group i have which uh, to whom i have given them the questionnaire that five uh, that is a group of a uh, five children they have to solve this questionnaire by observing this image so here very important my questionnaire is a input whereas this is the database they need to find out the question they need to search in a database one by one algorithmic thinking plus the pattern is going on next you can solve you can see here next the after the analytical report the third step that is data analysis here the actual output came into the picture after analyzing it they have to make a total of it and the total the person character 4 has got the highest mark means the questionnaire is made for that particular image and character 4 was anna the graph is also shows the same thing just remember the matching probability go ahead other group also come up with a different different answer after collecting and analyzing it each group has got the one correct answer because five different questionnaire is made for five different characters next during the variation it was very interesting now replace the actual disney princess with the actual human being with a non fictional character so here the challenge very important challenge came next image image uh, identification uh, extraction decomposition was very difficult when it comes to the actual human being next same same activity the probability has drastically reduced it's 23% next so how to solve this problem so they said if we will increase the number of questionnaire if we will train the more data so this is also very important concept we have taught them how to train the data it's a biggest pillar of ai so they come up with a more questionnaire they got the correct result accuracy has been increased batching probability that becomes 35% so disney princess it's very easy to identify matching probability was 45 human with a less data the matching probability is 23% when you train the data with more inputs as well as more face images the accuracy will be increased 
Next, as I discussed the first challenge, when it comes to the actual human being, it was solved by them only by increase the number of questioner and to analyze. The second uh, top second challenge was they found it's very difficult to extract the image or the de image decomposition when it comes to the actual human being. They were not aware about face type, nose type, ears type, eyes type. So they have taken a help from the Google. Time constraint as usual. Here also I'm facing that problem. <laughs> Next. Impact, if you will ask me, uh, it was very nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> so very good afternoon to all the dignitaries principal, teachers, and my dear friends. I am Mrs. Amruta DK. Myself, Mrs. Afrin Usmani. Uh, and I am Mihir Savai. And together, we are going to present a paper, Unplugged Activity to Teach Concept of Looping and Conditions Using Computational Thinking. Now, before I begin presenting my paper, quickly, I want all of us to do an activity. We roll our hand twice, then we clap twice, and we clap our fingers. <laughs> Now let us do it with music fast. Okay, so did you enjoy the activity? So what we did just now was, we just repeated a certain set of instructions, right? So this concept is called as looping when it comes to computers. Uh, Lynchumis, can I have next slide? Thank you. Now it can be executed in two ways. We can have incrementing loops and we can have decrementing loops. To give you a simple example, when we use an elevator to go from the ground floor to the top floor, you must have observed the elevator panel. We have ground floor, then we have one, two, three, and so on, till we reach our destination, right? So what happens is we are incrementing the values one by one. To teach this concept to our children, we have a class of 40 students, so we divided it into small groups. Now we asked the group to stand at the base of stairs. And on the stairs, we had stuck numbers from one to eight. On each stair, there was a piece of paper kept, which the child had to showcase when he goes and stands on that particular stair. Next to uh, the line where children were standing, there was a table which consisted of small chits. Now we asked the children, or we told the children rather, that we are going to begin our loop with one. So the first child came, he picked up a chit zero, and he knew he cannot go inside the loop because we want to start with one. He searched through the chits. To get the chit called as one, he went and stood on the first stair and showed whatever paper was kept over there. Now the second child knew that if he wants to climb the staircase, he has to stand on the stair numbered two. So he came, he picked up stair number two, the chit uh, with two written on it, and he stood on the second stair. Then he displayed the text that was kept over there. So like this, we uh, completed the entire loop. When the last child took chit number eight and he stood, so after that, no child was able to stand on the stair. The, with this, we taught the concept when the child took chit number one, that was the initialization condition for a loop. Then with the next increment of one, that is with the next number that is two, we taught the concept of increment by one. And then we ended our loop when the value reached eight. Now, similar to this, exactly the other way around, when we want to come down from the building, that is from the 10th floor to the ground floor, we see that the panel number goes on reducing from 10 to 9, 8, 7, and so on, till wherever we want to go, that is till our desired floor or till the ground floor. 
Now for this again, we made the children stand now at the top of the stairs. So they picked up the chits and they came and stood on the stairs with numbers 8, 7, 6, 5 and so on till 1. So here we taught a very important concept that when uh, we are using the decrementing loop, the initialization condition for that would be higher than the termination condition. For this, we also made use of loop box. I now request Mihi to show us about the loop box. Uh, so this uh, loop box we have made uh, it, uh, about nested loops. It will uh, it it is to help the students better understand the concept of nested loops. As you can see, there are three loops here nested within one another, and the innermost loop will in will increment. And then based on the looping conditions and on the looping limit, the corresponding outer loop there will be an increment in it. Then we also had one more activity wherein all the children were asked to sit in a circle. They were asked to clap five times. Then the next the control goes to second child. Now the second child claps five times. So with the increment of children, that was incrementation of the outer loop. And with one child clapping five times, that was the inner loop. Now I request Afrin Usmanimis to give us more details. Okay. Uh, we will ha quickly we will have one small activity. Uh, I want you all to raise your hand if your age is above 30. Quickly, because we have short of. <laughs> okay, <laughs> everybody, mostly everyone. Okay, hands down. Now, can I have all the ladies and wearing black color sari? Me too. <laughs> okay, now clap your hands twice if your birthday falls in the month of June or December. Okay, so actually here, have you observed, we have covered concept of if conditional statement along with logical and and or operator. So the same examples we have given to our students with different variations. So when we were taking this loop activity, increment, decrement, etc. that time, we have asked our students to, uh, you know, to perform a particular task if the child is wearing yellow color uniform. Thank you, everyone. May I now request Manisha Shinde, Poona, Chandekar, Chandekar and Poona Moe. Good afternoon, one and all present here. I am Manisha Ganesh Shinde, and these are my colleagues. Poonam More and Poonam Kandekar. Uh, we are from City Pride School Moshi. Today we are presenting our PPT on teaching computer network topology through computational thinking. Ma'am, next. So computer network topology means the physical and logical arrangements of node. So here we uh, understand the abstraction. We involve student in that activity. Here we consider replace student as a uh, we replace node as a student and cable as a thread. After that, we uh, guide student to uh, solve the problem step by step. We divide 40 student in uh, three groups and uh, assign one one topology to each group. Ma'am, next. So here, burst topology. Ma'am, next. In burst topology, if you observe, computer one wants to pass data to computer five. It broadcasts their data. So here, the co students are unable to understand what is meant by broadcast and how it will happen in the topology. So we, ma'am, next. So we asked student to form a line and I told last student to perform one action and that action will be passed throughout the student. So it, they understand the broadcast concept, how the data pass from the one computer to entire network. So after that, when they pass the action, some of, some of the student miss some action. So they understand how the data leakage happen in the burst topology. Next, uh, one more uh, disadvantage is we tell about the burst topology that when we cut the thread in between that uh, network, the entire network will get slowed down. So what happened in that? So we overcome all this drawback in next topology that will be explained by Poonamis. So next, uh, please, next, ma'am. Next. 
so here you can see that here in ring topology token is uh, circulating among the network so i asked the students to form a circle in the same manner and the uh, student who uh, and uh, i asked the students to circulate the block as a token and the uh, student who has the token that student only can pass the data to another student so like that they can pass the data and uh, because of this due to in, uh, unidirectional token ring the uh, performance of uh, ring topology is better than burst topology and here uh, to show the failure connection we cut the thread and ask the students for the result so student quickly uh, gave that yes the, the whole network will go down so student understood the concept thoroughly here and these disadvantage will be overcome by another topology that will be explained by my colleague hello everyone uh, ma'am next slide Yes, this is, uh, let's see about the star topology. So here we arrange the students according to this diagram. Means one student will stand in middle as a um, switch and others are connected separately uh, with the uh, different cable. Ma'am, next. So we took one um, activity uh, like this and uh, to illustrate the data transmission, one student will pass the data to another student through switch only. So here, uh, data is more secure and collision, is, uh, collision will not happen. So that's why we are using star topology mostly uh, in different areas. So this is how student will get the clear idea about the topology network architecture um, that we, uh, we are uh, teaching them. Next. So there were challenges were there that uh, while teaching network topology, we explained through uh, some videos also and uh, PPT also. But still some students were confused because see, network topology structure is little bit uh, 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 messy to understand. They can't imagine how it will be. So let's, uh, we thought that can we change the our style of teaching and uh, can we play with, uh, one game with them? So, like, uh, so we explained explain these uh, we uh, did the variations and we explain the uh, we <laughs> played a game with them ma'am next so uh, impact is that student really uh, ma'am next student really enjoyed the activity as we took the game and uh, as we know if we engage the student in a particular activity the learning output uh, output will be more effective so this is how um, uh, we combine the computational thinking with experiential learning, student involved in the experiment. So it is more easy for student to understand the concept. And so uh, this is how we are, uh, after taking questionnaire, we got, uh, we got idea that student understood the concept very nicely. Next. And we would uh, uh, like to special thanks to our Dr. Dipali Sawai ma'am. She is founder director of City Pride Group of Schools. And Sonia Garcha ma'am and Chitra Babu, they have guided us throughout the, our CTIS paper presentation journey. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. My name is Viral Prithvisi Chaudhary. I am from the Gujarat state of the Mesana Jilli. I am from the Mesana Jilli. I am from the Mesana Jilli. I am from the Mesana Jilli. मेरे स्कूल का नाम है सुंडिया प्राथमिक कुमालशाला वहाँ छः से आठ तक के बच्चों को मैं मैथ साइंस पढ़ाती हूँ मेरे स्कूल में टोटल 314 बच्चे हैं जिसमें से कक्षा छः से आठ में 141 स्टूडेंट पढ़ते हैं आज मैं आपको स्टूडेंट की मैथ स्किल को अनप्लग्ड कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग गेम से कैसे इन्हेंस करते हैं उसके बारे में बताऊँगी जानवरी 2023 में मैंने अपनी स्कूल में अनप्लग्ड एक्टिविटी के थ्रू कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग की शुरुआत की सबसे पहले मैंने फोर बाई फोर का सुडुकू अपने बच्चों को सिखाया 
बच्चों को सुडुकू में इतना इंटरेस्ट पड़ने लगा कि दूसरे दिन जब भी मैं क्लास में गई क्लास में आते ही बच्चों ने कहा बहन पहला एक सुडुकू आपो ने हमें घर ही सॉल्व कर लाइए बच्चों का यह इंटरेस्ट देख के मैंने अपने स्कूल के गार्डन में एक ब्लॉड ब्लैक बोर्ड था वहाँ पे मैंने एक सुडुकू लिख दिया और बच्चों को कहा आप अपने फ्री टाइम में या रिसेस के टाइम में आना और उसे सॉल्व कर देना दो दिन के बाद मैं उसमें सही आंसर लिख दूंगी और अप, अपना सुडुकू अपने आप चेक कर देना बच्चों को इसमें बहुत ज़्यादा मज़ा आया और उसी इंटरेस्ट को देखते हुए मैंने एक दूसरे बोर्ड पर मैथ्स पजल लिख दी तो बच्चे रिसेस के टाइम पर वो पजल सॉल्व कर देती थी अपनी बुक में और मैं शाम को जब घर जाती थी तब वही सही आंसर लिख देती थी और बच्चे अपना आंसर खुद से ही चेक कर देते थे इस तरह कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग हमारे स्कूल में एक आउटडोर एक्टिविटीज बन गया था कई स्टूडेंट को आउटडोर एक्टिविटीज पसंद है तो कुछ को इंडोर एक्टिविटीज पसंद है तो ये सोच के मैंने सभी स्टूडेंट को एंगेज करने के लिए सिटी रूम डेवलप करने का ख्याल आया जो बच्चे ग्रुप में ज़्यादा एक्टिव नहीं होते वो बच्चे सिटी रूम में आके अपने फ्री टाइम में एक्टिविटीज़ कर सकते हैं सिटी रूम बनाना इतना आसान नहीं था पहले तो कौन से एक्टिविटी वहाँ पे रखूँ जिसे बच्चों का इंटरेस्ट बना रहे सिटी रूम मैनेज कैसे करना है वो सब चैलेंजेस मेरे सामने आए फिर भी मैंने कई सारी एक्टिविटीज़ वहाँ पर रखी जैसे कि मैथ्स कैलेंडर सुडुकू मैथ्स पजल मैथ्स इक्वेशन के चार्ट्स एफ एल रिलेटेड गेम्स बच्चे अपने फ्री टाइम में यहाँ आते थे और सिटी रूम में एक उनकी नोट पड़ी हुई थी वहाँ उसमें सही आंसर लिखते थे और इस तरह बच्चों को धीरे धीरे सिटी रूम में जाने का और वहाँ के पजल सॉल्व करने का इंटरेस्ट बढ़ गया जो बच्चे एफ एल यानी कि फाउंडेशनल लिटरेसी एंड न्यूमरेसी में वीक थे यानी कि जो बच्चे मैथ्स का बेसिक सीखने में थोड़े वीक थे उनको भी मैथ्स में इंटरेस्ट बढ़ने लगा मैंने सिटी रूम में मैथ्स कैलेंडर रखा मैथ्स कैलेंडर में हर एक अंक पर एक पजल रखी हुई है इस पजल का आंसर कैलेंडर का ही अंक है जैसे कि एट अप्रैल मैंने रखा है तो एट अप्रैल के कॉलम में मैंने एक पजल लिखी है कि नाइन माइनस सॉरी एट माइनस नाइन बाई नाइन यानी कि उसका आंसर आता है एट वैसे ही सोलह अप्रैल में लिखा है टू रेस टू फोर यानी कि सोलह बच्चे सॉल्व करके अपने सिटी के नोट में लिख देते थे उसकी वजह से गवर्नमेंट स्कूल में जो स्कॉलरशिप की जो एग्ज़ाम आती है उसमें भी बच्चे अच्छी तरह से कर पाते थे इसी तरह मैंने कहीं सारी पजल वहाँ पे रखी हुई थी फिर मैंने सिटी की व्यूरचना का उपयोग मेरे मैथ्स स्टैंडर्ड एट के मैथ्स में किया चैप्टर टेन में विजुलाइजेशन ऑफ सॉलिड शेप्स बच्चों को स्कूल में और क्लासरूम का नक्शा ड्रॉ करना था तो वही मैंने सिटी व्यूरचना का यूज़ किया पहले मैंने सारे बच्चों को अपनी शाला में कितने क्लास है कहाँ पे है कितने अंतर पे है वो सब इंफॉर्मेशन कलेक्ट करने को कहा और फिर उसी के आधार पर उन्हें नक्शा ड्रॉ किया और कंप्यूटर में भी वो अच्छी तरह से उन्होंने नक्शा ड्रॉ कर दिया इस तरह मैंने स्टैंडर्ड सिक्स और सेवन में गैस माय बर्थडे एक्टिविटी से ऑड नंबर इवन नंबर प्राइम नंबर कंपोजाइट संख्या बड़ी या छोटी संख्या उस सब का कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर किया सबसे पहले मैंने मैथ्स वॉच घर से बच्चों को बनाने को कहा कहा कि आप उस मैथ्स वॉच को अपने घर पे ऐसे डिजाइन कीजिए जिसका दोनों जो बड़ा और छोटा वाला जो काटा आता है वो फ्लेक्सिबल रहे फिर मैंने तीन बजे तो वन बाई फोर हुआ सिक्स बजे तो वन बाई टू हुआ उस बड़े या छोटे जो काटे हैं वो ऑड इवन नंबर पे रखने को कहा उसमें भी बच्चे को मज़ा आ गया फिर उसी तरह मैंने गैस माई बर्थडे एक्टिविटी स्टार्ट की टीम बनाई और लॉजिकल क्वेश्चन बनाने को कहा कि जिससे बर्थ डेट जल्दी से आ जाए 
तो पहले तो बच्चे ने ऐसे ही क्वेश्चन बना दिए उनको पता ही नहीं चला कि उसमें कौन सा लॉजिक यूज करना है और धीरे धीरे उन्हें पता चला कि जितने कम क्वेश्चन होंगे उतने ज्यादा आप विनर बन पाओगे तो उन्होंने ऑड इवन नंबर Would you like to ask any questions to any of these presenters so that they will be happy to answer your questions and or queries? Can we? कविता शिंदे भक्ति महोले जयपाल अपा नेहा उम्बर का अमृता डीके अफ्रीन उस्मानी हिर सवाई मनीषा सिंधे पूनम कंडेकर पूनम मोरे थैंक यू ऑल दिनेश कुमार प्रजापति लास्ट प्रेजेंटेशन था ओके मे आई नो योर नेम सो दिनेश प्रजापति दिनेश कुमार प्रजापति लेट्स ब्रेक फॉर टी By 4:30, we will all have a get-together group photo. So. उसके पहले five minutes. आने से पहले, five minutes से पहले. क्योंकि बाद में even हाँ मतलब tea break से पहले या बाद में लेंगे. Evening को group photo अच्छा नहीं आएगा मैम. So. Before the session.
Thank you. I'm sharing the screen.